Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. So in this video, I'm just making a really brief tutorial. I'm gonna show you guys how to connect your OLED displays to your Seed Studio Xiao ESP32 C3 board. And you can do so either with or without a multiplexer. And I'm gonna show you the scenarios and cases in which you would need a multiplexer and which you wouldn't. So here we go. So first off, I'm gonna show you guys what you would need to do to connect these you can either do one, two, three OLED display, however many, to the same I2C bus on your Seed Studio board. In both scenarios, using and without using a multiplexer, you're just simply daisy chaining the I2C displays together. All of the SDAs are connected directly to the board's SDA, and all of the SEL pins are directly connected to the board's SEL pins, as are to the positive and negative volts. I have two different code files for you. They are both featured on my GitHub. The link is in the description. The first one titled two OLED displays, that's the one that you're going to use for the non-multiplexer setup. And I'm going to get to the code part later, but first I want to show you guys, this is how you would wire your board to your OLED displays. If you have your device wired, as I showed you, you're going to go ahead and head over to my GitHub where I am conveniently featuring Mark's code. I believe he goes by Mark's bench i'm very grateful to his code because it is the simplest that i've seen by far so go to multiple oled displays arduino is the repository then you're going to click on where it says two oleds esp32 c3 dot ino you're going to click on that i tweaked it slightly just to make it super easy once you have this downloaded you're going to open up your arduino go ahead and make sure you have your board information if you don't go ahead and watch my previous video where i go over that pull it up in your code or you can just copy and paste it and paste it in a script you'll also have to download these libraries if you're using this xiao esp32 c3 board you don't need to change anything with the sda sel pins just rec recognize that on your Zhao ESP32 board, you have the SD and SEL as pin four and five. Now that's actually, it, it depends on what pin you're talking about because all the pins are very, very different um, depending on how they're termed. Like, is it a GPIO pin or is it just a data pin? So what I'm talking about are these two pins right here. The two from the last one on the left side, those are the I2C port pins. The only thing you may want to change are the dimensions of your board here. And if you don't know which board to use, then just control and click and it'll bring you to the board page where you go and find whichever board matches this, the, the dimensions, and copy that, paste it here. It's pretty simple. Display A, B, dot, begin. It begins the display. This sets the I2C address as whatever it is hardwired on the back of your OLED. Brief let me explain. Each OLED display has a address hard-coded onto the back of it via a little tiny resistor, also called a jumper. This little guy up here, I recently soldered. It is horribly soldered, but we're going to ignore that part. It's either going to be one of two options. It's either 0x3c or 0x3d, or in this case, 0x78 or 0x78. I have two that are 0x78 and one that is 0x78. If you want to have multiple displays show the same data, then and you won't need to worry about them being individually addressed. First, I'll show you these two displays working, and then you'll see the difference between what will happen if you have two of the same address or two displays with each a different address. So this is what it will look like if you have two displays with the same address and you upload this code. In order to have two displays featuring different information, you will need to desolder this resistor and solder it to the other address or use an I2C multiplexer to assign it its own individual address. And you can have many different addresses using this and I will show you how to do that later. Now I'm going to show you what this looks like if you were to use a different address for one of your boards. This is what your devices will have on it when you have two different addresses. This also has a larger font, so if you want your code to have a smaller font, you can see how I distinguish between the two. This is 0x7a, this is 0x78. So two differently addressed boards as shown right here. These two boards right here have the same exact 0x78 address. They're both going to show the same exact information, even if you have a display A in here. It's 
it's not going to make this display A. Why? Because it does not have the same address. You can see where I have commented out the display C. I will show you guys how to connect a third display to this batch and how it doesn't do anything because there's only two addresses. Sometimes showing you how to break something is just as informative as showing you how to work something. So this code is not going to recognize three individual displays. It is only going to recognize the two addresses that are different. And two of these displays are going to have the same message. One is not. So this is what it looks like when you upload the code to three displays. I didn't know it would flicker like this, but it makes sense now because it's looping through B and C. So do the multiplexer. Let's do this the right way. If you did not want to solder this resistor on the back of your OLED board, I'm going to show you guys an alternative of using the I2C multiplexer in order to get different displays with the same address to feature different information. All this does is give it an address. The address is now individually assigned by the I2C multiplexer. So anything that you want to designate to a display will be sent through, I guess, the mailman and the mailman will deliver the mail to each different address. There's each I2C combination on here is a mailing address that this data is getting sent to. Now let's get to the code part with the multiplexer. The file titled multiplexer OLED displays is the file that you're gonna use with a multiplexer, obviously. So this is the code that I use in another video similar to this, but this one's more in depth. Um, I actually used Adafruit's code and then tweaked it a bit. I just incorporated the multiplexers code with it. So now it's going to have all three displays showing different information. So your board should be wired like this with the multiplexer and however many OLED displays you have, one, two, three, it doesn't matter, four or five, whatever, it's gonna work the same. I'm gonna show you the right and the wrong way. One thing to note is whenever you connect however many OLED displays to your multiplexer, you need to make sure that they all have the same address and by wrong way, I mean I'm going to show you how to connect the one that is not addressed the same as all the others with your multiplexer. So once you've uploaded this code to your board and you wired everything correctly, you should see this one is a little dim because it's kind of broken. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, I also in the last video broke this other one. So now I don't have three full examples to show you guys, but I promise it's on. It's just a little dim. And because I recently soldered the other address. I don't have a third to feature. This is what your setup would look like had you used a display that has a different address from the other two. It just simply wouldn't show anything. But before I used this one, I used a different code and it displayed something pixelated. So it'll either display nothing or it will just pixely. There might be a way to connect all these OLED displays with variable addresses to the same multiplexer, but that's beyond my knowledge currently. If you have any advice on that, please drop a comment below. I would love that. That would help me and anyone watching this video, so please do that if you know. That is how you connect multiple OLED displays to your Zhao development board with or without a multiplexer, with or without matching the addresses. If you found this video helpful in any way, please give it a like and show support. If you have any feedback, drop it in the comments. I'm going to be connecting other devices to this board as well, so if you want to see more content, don't forget to subscribe. Hopefully this helps you guys in your projects, and stay tuned for more.